Pastor Ed here with Daily Devotions for Friday, July the 28th, 2023. I want to begin first, we've been talking about the abundant life. We've been talking about that probably for the better part of the next month. Um, but I want to start today's devotion uh, with a reading from Matthew 22. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him, Jesus, a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Well, on November 30th, 1997, the Spokane, Spokesman Review newspaper in Spokane, Washington, reported that Renaissance Entertainment Incorporated of Orlando, Florida, was planning to market the following amusement park ride. The theme of the ride was Ego Trip, a ride about you. The ride which Renaissance reportedly hoped to sell to a theme park or to operate at state fairs will use the riders' names and photos and voices to create a totally personalized experience. As paparazzi snap away and adoring fans call out their names, the riders will first attend their own movie premiere. Next, they'll visit an art museum where they'll see, view paintings of themselves as done by artists Pablo Picasso, Andy Warhol, and Vincent van Gogh. Then they'll attend a political rally where they'll be urged to run for president, followed by a sporting event where they'll be praised for their athletic prowess. Finally, they'll enjoy a ticker tape parade in their honor. And afterwards, the ego-stroked riders will proceed to the gift shop where they'll be able to buy all sorts of souvenirs and trinkets emblazoned with their own image. When asked why, Renaissance Entertainment President John Binkowski said, why, what's everyone's favorite subject? Themselves. This is just taking it to the ninth degree, or nth degree, I should say. What this only serves to illustrate is that we live, unfortunately, in a society marked by an extreme, if not dangerous, degree of self-centeredness. Writing in the Wall Street Journal some years ago, Andrew Peyton Thomas observed, if the source of America's social disintegration is to be pinpointed so that it might be remedied, honesty compels us not to neglect selfishness. Self-centeredness and its related vices, crime, illegitimacy, child neglect, are exploding in America. Americans are glorifying extreme individualism beyond healthy limits. Of course, the message that we hear and see all around us each and every day is that it's all about us, the individual. Just as we once believed in a literal sense that the sun and the moon and the stars orbited around the earth, we still mistakenly believe in a figurative sense that the world orbits around us, around me. And what typically counts today is what's good and right for me, regardless of the needs and desires of others. We all want our slice of the pie, so to speak, in as big a piece as we can manage, even if it does mean that someone else might not get any pie at all. For example, as each of us looks out only for number one, all those who enjoy a high degree of material prosperity are often content to leave behind those who are living in poverty without even so much as a second thought. What's wrong with that picture? Is it good for us to be so self-absorbed? Or was Andrew Peyton Thomas correct that our extreme self-centeredness is corrupting our culture and ultimately destroying us? In his 1983 acceptance speech for the Templeton Prize for Progress in Religion, author Alexander Solzhenitsyn recalled the words that he heard as a child when the elders sought to explain the ruthless upheavals in his native Russia. Men have forgotten God. That's why all this has happened, they said. And he added, if I were called upon to identify briefly the principal trait of the entire 20th century, here too, I would be unable to find anything more precise and pithy than to repeat once again, men have forgotten God. G. Gordon Liddy, one of the Watergate conspirators, is reported to have said, I have found within myself all I need and all I ever shall need. I am a man of great faith, but my faith is in George Gordon Liddy. Similarly, actress Shirley MacLaine has been quoted as saying, the most pleasurable journey that you take is through yourself. The only sustaining love involvement is with yourself. I guess our self-absorption and self-centeredness could be excused if we lived in a perfect world where there were only haves and no have-nots, where there was only peace and prosperity and no violence or injustice. But humanity's track record isn't so good. For every human accomplishment, there seems to be at least 10 failures, some of them reaching tragic proportions. I'm reminded of something that once happened to former baseball great slugger 
uh, Ralph Kiner. After a season in which he had hit 37 home runs, Kiner went in and asked the Pittsburgh Pirates general manager, Branch Rickey, for a raise. Rickey, however, refused to give him one. But I led the league in homers, Kiner reminded him. And Rickey responded by asking, well, what place, in what place did we finish? Last, replied Kiner. Well, said Rickey, we can finish last without you. In the end, our tendency towards self-centeredness, particularly when it ignores the needs of others, as well as ignores the failures of our world, distracts us from the big picture and also what abundant living is all about. The story is told of a pilot who radioed the air traffic controller and said, I'm lost, but I'm making great time. It's kind of funny until that is, we consider all those in our hectic, fast-paced world who are racing to get their piece of the pie and fulfill the American dream and live out all their personal hopes and desires only to find out that they're making great time on a journey to nowhere. Philosopher Blaise Pascal once said, it is vain, O men, that you seek within yourselves the cure for your miseries. All your insight only leads you to the knowledge that it's not in yourselves that you will discover the true and the good. I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly, said Jesus. And when we look closely at the life of Jesus, we immediately discover someone who was first and foremost in a right relationship with God, someone who was, in other words, God-centered. Everything else, being in a right relationship with others and with all the rest of creation, flowed from that right relationship with God. And Jesus then made it his life's goal to help others become God-centered as well and to help them thereby experience the abundant life. His unwavering faith in God, whom he called Father, and in God's love for him, freed Jesus to live authentically in the world and to fulfill the mission for which he had been sent, a mission that rejected self-centeredness at every step of the way and then culminated in the most supreme act of self-sacrifice that the world has ever known, his death on the cross. As we heard in that gospel reading earlier, when a lawyer once asked Jesus, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? Jesus didn't even hesitate. Without missing a beat, Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This, thus, the greatest commandment in the law, is to be God-centered, not self-centered. Well, I hope you have a great day and look forward to continuing this conversation of being God-centered, not self-centered, uh, tomorrow on Saturday. Until then, take care. Bye.